we shall start the session now um, we have the speaker for the sixth session as dr usha ishwaran she is ceo of some sikh organization uh, with this few words i'll hand over the session to dr usha she will introduce herself and she will start uh, the uh, lecture Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes. And uh, is the screen visible, ma'am? Yes. My PowerPoint. Okay. So very good afternoon to all the participants. And first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, SRM University and also ACT for uh, bringing this non-technical uh, topic as part of your uh, uh, portal, because this is very, very essential for any human being. So I'm also extremely happy to interact with you all, my dear participants. So after lunch, you may be thinking like, oh, what is this? How are we going to concentrate? And uh, but some of you may be thinking, yes, it is a non-technical common subject. So I'm interested to take part. So there are two types of thoughts which come in your mind. One is why should I? And another thing is, why can't I? So this is what I'm going to talk about. How do you manage your mind, your thoughts and which leads you to an action? So thank you so much once again. Let me take you through the presentation and um, welcome you all. I'm Dr. Usha Ishwaran. And um, I'm a doctorate in electronics and communication engineering from Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University. And uh, I'm running a company named Seek. And uh, we do skill development, career guidance, and academic consultancy. I'm also a member planning board at uh, Thruvalluvar University. And uh, I'm an academician, basically, and an educationist, entrepreneur, career analyst, professional life skill coach, motivational speaker, NLP master practitioner, public speaking coach, and a YouTuber. And I have around 30 years of uh, experience and I have addressed more than 20 lakhs of uh, people and trained more than a lakh of uh, students and placed more than 10,000 students and counseled for depression related issues, more than a lakh of people for the past 20 years. And today we're going to talk about the mental or the mind and emotion management. So let me take you through this uh, with a basic understanding, like where are we going and why do we need this and uh, how this is going to help us in our, uh, in our career and also in our life. So when we talk about this, are you a ruderless boat being tossed about in life sea or are you on course to get what you want from life? The very best thing you can do to achieve your goals and change your life is to make friends with your mind. So it works with you rather than against you. So that is the simple secret of mind management in one line. That is nothing but make yourself as friendly as possible with your mind. So that is what is all about. And we're going to talk about uh, in today's session is about mind and how to manage it or how to be in possession of it or even how to control it. So happiness and well-being are intimately connected to the mind and to feel happy and well, you need to be able to as access positive emotions, energy and motivation. And you need to be able to direct or focus your mind at will and sustainable. And these qualities aren't simply give, given, but are complex abilities, actually, that develop to a greater or lesser extent as we move through the life. So mind management, this is nothing but an act or skill of controlling, organizing and coordinating the activities of mind in order to achieve defined objectives. So that is what is the ultimate goal of each and every one of us. We have something to achieve and we have fixed up some goal in our mind. So how do we achieve that? But there are a lot of disturbances externally and internally allowing or not allowing us to achieve those objectives so internally it is our mind 
which stops us from achieving all those things so managing mind is nothing but managing emotions desires motivation attention thinking and so on and so forth so we are not going to go in deep in this topic but let me give you just a touch and go of the difference between the brain and mind because the mind is associated with the brain we cannot talk about this differently i can i can tell you in a simple term like a brain is like a hardware and your mind is like a software and the two terms are often used interchangeably actually brain is considered to be the physical thing and the mind is considered to be the mental thing and the brain is composed of nerve cells and it can be touched whereas the mind cannot be touched so the debate on the difference between the brain and the mind has been going on since from the time of aristotle mind is considered as a pure vibrating energy whereas the brain is considered as a physical manifestation of the mind so the apo difference might have helped in understanding how mind and brain are two different entities the brain is the central processing unit of the body and plays a key role in translating the content of the mind that is your thoughts your feelings your attitude your beliefs your memories your imagination they all into account and they are or translated into complex patterns of nerve cell firing and chemical release so these complex patterns of nerve cell firing and chemical release are called neurosignatures and they may intimately affect the physiology and biochemistry of the body so what is mind management the mind management is very very simple way we can say that it is a way to control one's mind to do this we need to be cautious about our thinking process that is what is the ultimate secret here and why we need a mind management unless we control or manage our mind it is difficult to achieve success and peace and psychologists say every interest in first born in the mind as a seed and then it continues to grow later it takes its real form which everybody can see the interest that first appears in the mind remains weak for the first 3 minutes remember this anything that comes into your mind remains weak for the first 3 minutes and then it becomes strong within the next 5 minutes so all the negative aspects should be deleted within the first 3 minutes anything that comes into your mind that is destructive self destruction or destruction to someone else that has to be removed or deleted from within the 3 minutes of erupting in your mind that is why we say do something immediately if it is a good thought and postpone it if it is not a good thought so if not taken out they would become stronger later and you can never throw them out after taking control over the mind we can control passion interest and unrest and mind management is essential for a peaceful and healthy life we all know that we need to have that and the age of computers has thrown us on the escalator of aspirations but has robbed us of the simple charms like falling asleep we don't get proper sleep why why does it happen because of our mind because of the thoughts running in our mind so the compulsions of the hectic schedules burden the mind and cause stress however the joys that elude us can be regained by mind management and it creates tranquility simplifies life and cleanses our mind and why do we need mind management what do we want to change in our life do we want a more or less of something or to learn a new skill or experience different things or do we want to change something about our relationships or body or work or finances it does not have to mean we hate your life or work now but 
We just want to be in better in some way. Every one of us, we feel that I need to do some changes in this area. I need to improve in this area. I should not have done that. So a lot of things comes in our mind. And how do we change? How do we improve? And how do we achieve our goals? By proper mind management. So yes, we all want changes and that is why you need mind management. And life management begins with mind management. The quality of your life is influenced by the quality of your thoughts. Take my words, that is absolutely true. What we think, that is what we do. So the quality of our life is influenced by the quality of our thoughts. So we need to refine our thoughts in such a way that our mind is free from any tension or stress or pressure or confusion and we can just go in a smoother way. I'm just going to talk to you a little about what is life as per my understanding. So here, when once when I was traveling to USA, I boarded the flight and the stewardess came to me and said, welcome on board, ma'am. And she also said one more thing. She said, we guarantee you take off. I was shocked. I asked her, what about landing? She said, pray to almighty for a safer landing. So we all are aware that when we take a flight, the takeoff is completely beyond us and we can do nothing about the takeoff. And it's completely in the hands of the pilot. And when it comes to landing, even the landing is completely beyond our control. Sometimes we may have a smooth landing like this. What a smooth landing, how nice it will be if you land like this. But I also experienced this type of landing too. This is what is the bumpy, bumpy landing. And when we have smooth landing where we don't even come to know that the plane has landed, we all give an ovation to the pilot. Oh my God, what a pilot he is. He has, he has given a fantastic landing and the only thing what I can't do is a standing ovation because our seat belts will be signed on and we will be uh, sitting in the seat and we can't stand up and give a standing ovation. So that is the only difference. And then coming to the turbulence when you're flying, many of us would have experienced the turbulence when the when the aeroplane is passing through the clouds. The turbulence during the journey is completely beyond us. The wind speed is beyond us. When the plane passes through the clouds, the entire plane becomes wobbly and it is out of our control. Then what is in our control? What do we do during the journey or in the aeroplane? The takeoff is not in our control. The landing is not in our control. The turbulence is not in our control. Then what is in our control? When we are traveling during the flight, it's our choice. Some people choose to sleep. Some people will be drinking something, eating something. Some will be watching movies. Some will socialize, will make new friends, talk to the neighbor, whoever is sitting next to you. This is absolutely left to the passengers. It's your decision what you want to do. So yes, what to do during the journey is in our control. Similarly, I wanted to relate this with our life, our birth. In the journey of life as well, the takeoff, that is the birth, is not in our control. It is absolutely the Almighty's control. And we don't decide where we are born, who are our parents. None of us decide that. So the Almighty takes the control like a pilot. And we don't even know in which religion we are born, which country we are born, which state we are born, and how do we look when we are born. And we don't even have a control over our socio-economic status when we are born. Our takeoff of the journey of life is completely beyond our control too. So 
and the landing as i said the death even that is completely beyond us i have heard many people telling me that they would just love to die by getting a massive heart attack no trouble for them no hospitalization no tubes no needles no trouble caused to others one shot go now no matter how much ever we wish that it's just beyond us and turbulence and what about the turbulence the disturbances the problems during our life some of them are within our control which we can solve but many problems and issues the turbulence caused is completely beyond our control and because it is caused by the situations which is beyond us it is caused by the people who are beyond us yes ladies and gentlemen in this journey of life the take off and the landing and the turbulences is not in our control so what is in our control however is the choices we can make and therefore life is all about learning of how to make your right choices and when we learn to make those right choices when we learn we learn to live a transformed happy and fulfilled life despite of all the turbulences and problems that are going on around us it is we have to decide how we have to live and when we are beautiful you know the inner beauty is blessed for each and everybody by the almighty that is the gift the god has given and when we live our life beautiful when we utilize the strengths given by the almighty the abilities given by the almighty and whatever has been blessed on us when we understand and utilize all these things in a proper way then that will be the gift what we give to the almighty so ladies and gentlemen this is what is the simple concept of life so let us all take the wisdom and learn to make the right choices which are within our control as our gift to god and thus live our life as thorough as perfect ladies and gentlemen now coming to the purpose of life so how to find the purpose of life to find the purpose of life you are going to need to go do some digging because there are so many answers to this question it is important that you find the one that resonates with you it must be given to you enough a feeling that it satisfies your need to ask that question as i touched on this starts with knowing why you want to know the purpose of life in the first place because here is how you can answer the big question what is the purpose of life the purpose of life is to be happy happiness cannot be traveled to owned earned won or consumed happiness is the experience of living every minute with love grace and gratitude so one of the most obvious conclusions we may come to is the need to be happy unfortunately we often don't know exactly what happiness is and it can therefore be hard to find to know how to find happiness and whether or not it is an adequate purpose to your life you need to first discover what happiness means to you and once you have a crystal clear image of whatever that is you can start to go after it and see if it gives you the sense of purpose that answers the big question 20 years from now take my words ladies and gentlemen 20 years from now you will be or we will be the most disappointed by the things we did not do then by the things you did do so we have missed a lot of things we are missing a lot of things and we will be feeling bad for it in future don't miss the the important things that is important for our life life is a journey you have to travel with a lot of love and affection and satisfaction and happiness and if our mind is not going to allow us to do so then absolutely we are in the right place where we need to manage our mind so that is very very essential because mind management is about becoming aware of the impact of your thoughts have on you and using your mind to your advantage so how your mind is acting on you that is under our control so let us focus on that and see how we can manage our mind so our thoughts influence how we feel and which influences what we do or the actions we take which impacts how we live our lives so thoughts influence what we do this is what is the very very important thing which we need to keep in mind and refine and also revisit every time to see how we think the thoughts that keep coming without 
without your wish without your permission it keeps coming so that is the one which influence what we need to do so time to take a step back because underlying all of this is the notion that the way we think and the thoughts we think influence what we do so our thoughts influence how we feel which influences what we do or the actions we take which impacts how we live our lives it sounds obvious when you say it like that but just take a moment to think about it and see if you really believe this is so or if you are aware of it in your day to day life so thoughts we think lead to the actions we take what we think immediately happens as an action so the thoughts you think lead to the action you take so it therefore follows that if you change your thoughts that's the way you think then you can change your actions this means you can make the changes you want in life work or business wherever it is it all depends upon how we think whether we are going to think it in a positive way or in a negative way or non positive way so your thoughts are not you and you are not your thoughts you are not defined by your thoughts which means that you can change your thoughts to help you live how you want to live and that is what we mean when we talk about the mind management and we have been talking about why we need mind management to make changes but it's not just about doing things differently it's all about enjoying the everyday experience of being alive after all one of the changes you could look for is to be happier or more enthusiastic in your life it's not just about things it's about being as well and the mind management is the key for all these things so what do we need to know about the mind there are two major components of the mind being conscious and subconscious and we know that our brain is in effect an information processing system containing the nerve cells that is what we call it as a neurons which are connected through the synapses and so what do we know about the mind these neural pathways are influenced and strengthened by what we do if the influences in our lives our previous experiences beliefs and the values we have stored in our minds and these neural networks or pathways are strengthened by repetition i would like to repeat it once again how these neural networks are strengthened it is by the repetition how frequently we think about certain things that gets stored permanently in our mind so that is what we need to remember remember very well that we don't allow the negative thoughts or the demotivating thoughts or destructive thoughts we don't have to recall them again and again when we practice to recall them again and again what happens is it goes and gets stayed in the subconscious mind where you cannot erase it and you will not control over it also so one of the potential problems of the mind is that it can be consciously or unconsciously influenced so and the non conscious is the more powerful that is what the subconscious is more powerful we used to tell no even in the sleep if you ask them something they will be able to answer so that comes from the subconscious mind so you have to be very very careful in selecting what is to be stored in the subconscious mind what gets stored in the subconscious mind is what we keep thinking again and again that is what we need to be very careful in not recollecting something which is not to be stored in the subconscious mind and we should get the conscious and the subconscious to work in harmony through mind management so there is no dissonance or disagreement between the two component parts of the brain and between your actions and your beliefs so mind management that is the key to getting what you want and making the changes and why you need and want mind management you can influence your conscious mind you can determine your thoughts so you need to influence your subconscious so it aligns with this conscious and subconscious gets aligned so we also know that our subconscious mind was itself programmed and can therefore be reprogrammed but the process is slow and incremental so you have to really focus on this that it is not that easy to reprogram your subconscious mind so the captain of your ship it is likened to 
a super tanker that is your subconscious being controlled by the captain of your ship that is conscious. The captain, the conscious mind may be in charge, but the instructions the captain give take a long while to affect the influence, the super tanker that is our subconscious mind. So our conscious mind may be the captain of the ship. He may be giving a lot of instructions, but it is not that easy to influence the subconscious mind. But the subconscious, like the formation of any habit, including thinking habits, can be influenced through repetition. That is why I keep telling you that anything that gets stored in your subconscious cannot be erased or reprogrammed again and again because that has been uh, strongly formed due to the repetition process. So if you want to have any habit, if you want to make it as a habit, if you want to bring in a thinking a habit, good thinking habit, then you, it can be influenced through repetition only. So I will give you one example like, you will see a lot of, we see a lot of advertisements. The advertising relies on this repetition of key messages to get you to believe and then buy their product or concept or ideas. We see that every day we see the advertisements and they get stored in our subconscious mind. So that is what is the marketing technique. That is why even uh, we tell the students uh, to uh, repeat certain things so that they can remember. So this is why you can recall adverts from years ago, long time when we were children, you would have seen some advertisements and we can recall them. Even the small music is played, we can recall what advertisement it is. Even the childhood ones we can recall now, particularly when you add in a few tricks of the trade to make it even more memorable tricks, incidentally, we can use to our advantage in the mind management terms. And the bottom line is mind management will help you change what you want to change and achieve what you want to achieve. So by using that technique, what we can do is if you want to change some thinking process, like I will I will take you through certain thinking process, what we generally have. So when we have certain things, we, we get demotivated. We don't have confidence in us. We don't feel self-confident. We always feel low about ourselves. We always feel inferior about ourselves. So that has to be changed. So a lot of time when our mind is a source of trouble, it manifests in thinking. And by thinking, I particularly mean the internal use of language, the inner languaging, that the one what we talk to within ourselves, the inner dialogue, though mental imagery, also plays a role in thinking. So here, you can see that the key notion here is that the thoughts and feelings mutually condition each other in a cyclic and a feedback-like manner. An example should help you to make you understand that is suppose you're making a call to your friend and she is not answering your call. So you're leaving a message. After some time, she still has not called you back. What goes into your mind? I have shown you the possible interplay between the thoughts and feelings in this case how we go into a depressive thinking. You can see the thoughts. Why didn't she call me? We are thinking. What is the feeling I'm getting? Slightly uncomfortable and anxious feeling when she will call me. Then maybe I have done something to upset her, my thoughts. Again, what happens to my feelings? Slightly more uncomfortable, anxious feeling. Then I'm again thinking, actually, she did seem rather curt with me last week. So we recall something back and we are connecting them. Again, what happens to my feelings? Slightly more uncomfortable, anxious feeling. Then what we are thinking? She does not like me. Then I get a feeling anxious and hurt feeling. This situation is just like another from my past in which I fell out with a friend. So now I'm comparing this with one another incident and also coming to a conclusion, it is similar to that. The pattern is matching. So I'm going to lose my friend. That is a thought comes into my mind. So what happens? Slightly more anxious and hurt feeling. I feel so hurt 
that my friend is avoiding me she does not like me so that is what comes into my mind and no one really likes me ultimately finally what i think no one really likes me and i will never have any real friends what sort of feelings i get hurt anxious and depressed feeling this is what happens in every one of us because we ourselves imagine certain things we don't know why the friend has not taken the call or why she had not called back but we develop our own opinions and perceptions and we come to a conclusion also then we get demotivated we get pressurized and we get stressed we start hating our own self so that is what goes on into your mind the cognitive distortions are different ways of leaping to unwarranted conclusions that go beyond the known facts they tend to arise in inherently ambiguous situations of which there are lots in life we just saw an example which started with wondering why your friend did not call back there are several categories like that category number 1 mind reading thinking that you know what others are thinking and feeling or why they acted as they did example she laughed because she thinks i'm stupid she said that to hurt me if i ask him for help he will think i'm weak so these are all the things what we put in our mind she would have laughed for some other reason but we think that she's laughing at me because she thinks i'm stupid so these are all un unwanted assumptions in our mind second one is over generalizations extending inferences way beyond what is reasonable or treating general tendencies as inviable rules example you can't trust anyone in a position of authority or everyone hates you so that is what you think about certain situations and all or nothing thinking also known as the black and white thinking this is assuming things fall into discrete categories when the reality is a continuum that is i am just not intelligent or if you are not with us you are against us so if somebody is not joining in your team or joining you uh, for some group discussions or something they are avoiding you you feel that they are against you so these are all certain thoughts that comes into our mind then personalization this is assuming that things happen and other people act as they do because of you as though you were the center of the universe so for example the boss looks angry he obviously didn't like my report this kind of thinking stems from the mistake of assuming everyone around us is paying a, paying us attention when in truth they are not so there may be several reasons why they are doing that but we assume because our focus is only one thing that they are showing it to us so if your boss is angry you think that he doesn't like you or you have not sub submitted the report properly all those things are your self assumptions that goes into your mind and catastrophism making negative predictions about how things will turn out an exaggerated form of pessimism so for example she will find me really boring and won't want to go out with me so you make your own assumptions and conclusions like the others may feel that you are boring the others may not like you they will not come with you they will not accommodate you in their group so all these things are our assumptions and then emotional thinking assuming your thoughts must be true because they feel true or fit with your emotions example i feel like a failure therefore i am a failure so you what way you feel you think that is the end of it this often results from a lack of clarity and consequent inability to distinguish thoughts and feelings so one particular aspect will not make you a failure maybe that particular time you have not succeeded that doesn't mean that you are a failure your action is failure so you can any time change your action and you can become successful and and to take take my words only if you face failures you will be able to become successful by learning from failure so these are all certain things which are there in everybody's mind even every every feeling i have also undergone and mental filtering the tendency to focus on only one aspect of a situation and not seeing the whole picture that is what i said example you get one low rating on your performance appraisal and think you are no good at your job even though several other ratings are much higher 
this often happens because we magnify the negative and minimize the positive and you may think your positive qualities don't really count for anything we ourselves we feel low about ourselves like there if you meet somebody you know like they say one thing negative about you and they talk 100 positive things about you you think only about that one negative thing that is spoken against you and we forget about all those positives that keep ringing in our mind why did he say like that why did she say like that so that is what is the nature of our mind and that is why these all type of mental feeling we get and because of that as i said thoughts leads to your action so what we think is what makes us to act however we are so that is what we need to control and we should not go into this type of thoughts and whatever the inputs we give to our senses we need to be really really careful about it we give so many inputs to our senses and they all leave an indelible mark in our brain so that we forget we just take whatever we see we just take it in whatever we hear we just take it in so that is not the way because your brain is for something else our mind space is meant and reserved for the most important and valuable things do not subject yourselves with unwanted things in the world around us when we keep um, allowing things to go inside unwanted things to go inside what happens it disturbs your mind it disturbs your peace of mind it disturbs your thought process it disturbs your feelings and thereby your actions so lot of senses are there so you have to be very very careful and in giving inputs to those senses so these things unwanted things will go and occupy the precious mind space which should not be taken by unwanted less valuable and less priority things it is not required just avoid people who talk negative avoid people who don't encourage you avoid people who feel find feel you jealous it's not in our it's not required for us so that is what we need to be careful more than mind management giving inputs to our mind is also one way of avoiding unwanted things and another thing which i would like to uh, tell you here is about the mental noise or the mind chatter because as long as our internal organs are functioning like our heart our kidney our lungs and all those things the mind the thoughts will keep coming you cannot stop anything as how we function similarly the mind the thoughts will keep coming so there is no point of stopping those thoughts so definitely this noise or chatter is something like which are not positive so the inner chatter goes on and on in everybody's mind in one day you will get more than 60 to 70000 thoughts 60 to 70000 thoughts will keep coming in our mind even while sleeping we will get the thoughts so you might always be aware of it that uh, the of this mental noise because it has become a deeply embedded habit and is considered as a natural and inseparable part of life this mental noise is like a background noise that never ceases from the moment of waking up from the morning to the moment of falling asleep in the night often it even prevents you from falling asleep many of us will get up and see in the morning that did we sleep properly i don't feel i had a deep sleep i was having a disturbed thoughts coming into my mind these are all something which every one of us feel what is that disturbing thoughts disturbing thoughts is what we call it as a mind chatter or a mental noise so when do you become more aware of this mental noise and find it disturbing when do we find that especially when you need to focus your mind on a certain activity such as studying or reading or solving problems or doing your work or anything anything important to you at this time you become more aware of the buzz and the constant flow of the irrelevant and often useless or distracting thoughts this is what is called as mental noise this is what is called as mental noise and one of the characteristics of the mind is the habit of repeating the same thoughts again and again in a loop 
like a video or an audio that got stuck. We keep on recalling, recalling, recalling. Whoever we meet, we talk about it. We always like to talk about something not positive to anybody. So by that way, when you recall number of times, it gets stored in your subconscious mind. It gets stored in your subconscious mind. So if these are positive thoughts, that's fine. Wonderful. Motivating thoughts, wonderful. However, too often, these are negative thoughts that intensify stress, worry, anger, or frustration. These are thoughts that are absolutely not required for us. These activities of the mind produce a constant background noise, which often intrudes into the foreground in the middle of everything you do. So that keeps coming from the back of your mind. Some unwanted things, somebody might have told you something, some worry, you keep on getting that noise. So too often all this tiring and exhausting making us become impractical and lazy. We become we become less potential, like we, we don't show our potential. So this constant mental charter also makes us miss opportunities. And due to, because why I say you miss opportunities, you feel low about yourself. You are not confident. You get demotivated just because somebody had told you something. So that mind chatter or the mind mental noise will not allow you to take up any opportunity. So the mind is a useful tool, but it also needs to be controlled. Wouldn't it be great if you think, if you could think when you need to, like solving a problem or making a plan, and then after that, just switch off your mind and enjoy in the peace. So you should know how to switch off your mind. Switching off the mind creates a state of inner peace. So you should make it a habit to switch off your mind from unwanted things to um, the things which are required. I will give you one method which I follow. Everybody will get some unwanted thoughts coming into our mind. But the mistake what we do is we try stopping those negative thoughts. So as and when you try stopping the negative thoughts or unwanted thoughts coming into your mind, it becomes more and more. So what I do is I immerse myself with more positive thoughts without touching the negative thoughts at all. Let it come and go. But I will ignore and I will immerse myself into the positive situations, the positive thoughts which will make me happy and give me inner peace. So imagine that you have a glass of hot milk. How do you cool it? You bring it to an environment where it is cold. So that same thing happens in our mind. When we have some disturbing thoughts, when we are in stress, when we have this mind noise, negative mind noise, bring that into a colder environment. So you are now hot with those thoughts. How do you cool down? Come to a colder environment. If you like to watch some movies, if you like to crack some jokes, if you like to be in a situation where people will be encouraging you, be with friends who are, who are talking good about you, or go out for a walk and look at the greeneries. Looking at the greeneries will cool you down. A lot of plants, a lot of uh, good breeze, just go for a walk. So you will have a lot of, lot of things gaining when you come out of that hot, hot environment. So you have to look for the cold environment to cool down. So that is the way you can avoid the mental noise or the mind chatter and the mind noise which is disturbing you. So that is one of the tips which I would like to tell you because that is what I follow. And let me tell you an incident like there was a king and there was an artist. He came to the king and he said like, give me one plain wall. I will create a beautiful painting for you. Then the king was uh, very happy in the kingdom. He is going to create some uh, art in his kingdom. So he allowed him and he gave him whatever he wanted. There was one another artist who came to the king and said like, I will also create an art in the opposite wall. And I will create the arts exactly what this person is creating, but put a curtain in between him and me. I don't want to see what he is drawing, but at the end, I will be able to create the same thing what this artist is creating. The king was really surprised. How is it possible? You really don't know what he's going to draw, what he's going to paint, and you're not going to see him what he's going to paint. 
then how will you be able to recreate that? He said, wait and see. Then one month went off. And now the king came and the painter said, artist said, like, everything is fine, sir. I've completed my painting. You can just have a look at it. The king saw the first person's painting and was astonished with the beauty of the painting. And he said, like, oh, my God, what a beautiful painting. And he gave a lot of gifts to that painter. Then he asked the second painter, have you done? Have you done with your painting? The second artist said, yes, I have done with my painting. And you can just remove the, uh, the partition, what you have in between, and see my painting. And immediately, the partition was removed, the curtain was removed, and the king was able to see the beautiful painting, a replica of what the first person has drawn. He gave double the amount of gift to the second artist. So he was so surprised, like, how did you do that? How did you do that? Then this man said, the second artist said, like, the entire uh, one month, I was polishing the wall. I was polishing in such a way that it will, it will, will, it will shine like a mirror so that whatever is drawn in this wall will reflect on this wall. That is what I did. And you are seeing the same painting as my wall is looking like a, a mirror. So many people come to me for counseling and complain that they lack confidence and they don't think they have any talent, that they lack motivation. And I tell them that all of these are part of your hard work is cleaning the wall of your mind. Only thing what we need to do is just to clean the wall of our mind in the way that what is hidden deep within us our talent, our positivity, our confidence, our goodness, that will reflect in our mind and thus in our actions too. So that is what is the secret. We need to clean our wall of mind and you can indeed achieve something spectacular. And don't they say that the soul knows how to heal itself. So the challenge is to silence the mind. And one of the ways to silence the mind, the negative chatter is to neglect. Just neglect the negative chatter. If you just see the child, you know, like it will simply cry some children, small babies, you know, like they will cry for no reason just to attract the uh, importance or attract somebody's uh, concentration, attention. But the, if the mother knows that the child is simply crying, she will ignore. After some time, if you see, the child will slow down in its crying and it will concentrate on something else. So unwanted things, unwanted thoughts, the negative thoughts, the demotivating thoughts, when it comes into our mind, allow it to come and you can... Did anyone say something? Allow it to come and do not stop it let it come but in the meantime allow a lot of positive thoughts into your mind so when you ignore the negative thoughts without caring for it automatically it will die one day that is one way you can handle that and then coming to the emotional intelligence which is extremely important and it is nothing but the ability to recognize our own feelings and those of others motivate ourselves and manage emotions well in ourselves in our interpersonal relationships. And you need to have this self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, relationship management, self-performance and people's performance. This is a very important parameters to develop our emotional intelligence. And an emotionally intelligent person is someone who lives and works well. Anywhere, wherever they go, they'll be successful. And an emotion when we talk about our emotion, emotion is a feeling such as happiness, love, fear, anger, hatred, which can be caused by the situation that you are in or the people you are with. And emotional intelligence is something like its general ability to recognize the emotions not only inside yourself, but also inside others. There are generally speaking four loosely defined fields of study, understanding, that is self-awareness, self-control, empathy, and social skills. And these emotions are important pieces of information that tell you about yourself and others. But in the face of stress that takes us out of our comfort zone, we can become overwhelmed and lose control of ourselves. 
And another thing what we need to learn is to manage stress. With the ability to manage stress and stay emotionally present, you can learn to receive upsetting information without letting it override your thoughts and self-control. You will be able to make choices that allow you to control impulsive feelings and behaviors and manage your emotions in healthy ways and take initiative, follow through on commitments and adapt to changing circumstances. And you have to develop this empathy. I can be empathetic by showing others I understand and relate to their feelings. That will give you a wonderful peace of mind. And 10 ways to improve your self-awareness. Get out of the comfort zone. Identify your triggers. Do not judge your feelings. Do not make decisions in a bad mood. Do not make decisions in a good mood too. And get to the bird eye view. And look for your emotions in the media. And revisit your values and act accordingly. And check your stress level. And fill the blind spot with feedback. And this is what happens when we neglect to manage our emotions. Failure to advance in career. Lack of complete delegation. High rate of attrition in your team if you're working. Then poor decision-making capability and rage in workplace and relationship problems. All these things happen when we don't control our emotions. And what happens when our problems go beyond our control. A lot of people will be saying like, I have so many problems and how to deal with it. I'll just take you through one example. I, I was trying to make a, a lemonade, but what I did is I took one glass of water and add five lemons. That means I should, I added five times more lemon into that water. So what will happen? How does it, uh, how will it taste? It will taste sour. I wanted to remove some lemon juice out of the water to make it taste perfect again. When I had to add one lemon, I added five lemons. It is tasting sore. Can I remove the lemon from the water? That is what we are trying to do. Somehow or the other, we need to correct this now. How do I correct it? Is it possible to remove the lemon? But what I did is I added five glasses, four more glasses of water to that lemonade. So now I have got five glasses of lemonade to serve to four more people. But there sure would be a fix. A, a problem can be fixed in our life also. How do we do that? We cannot undo things that we, that we would have done wrong in our lives. Like how I did a wrong in mixing the number of lemons in one glass of water. It made sore. And I added four more glasses of water so that I got five glasses of lemon to serve. So that was, that is what happening in our life also. We also do a lot of things. Sometimes we do a lot of wrong in our life, some wrong decisions, some wrong choices, some wrong investments. We speak wrong words, which cannot be taken back and we cannot reverse those things. So what should we do about that? We should try to work on adding so many right things. Don't try to remove the negativity or the uh, the wrong things which you have already done. It is not possible. But what we can do to um, um, make it proper is we have to add a lot of right things. Instead, we should try to work on adding so many right things in the life that the wrong seems smaller than what it was earlier. So when problems seem to be helplessly beyond our control, rather than simply trying to remove them, let us add positivity and change our experience. Adding positivity will change our experience. And how do we handle stress? This is another thing because every one of us use this word and most common search word in Google is also stress. So I wanted to give you a differentiation between the stress and the pressure. So we can describe stress as referring to the demands of daily living with not enough money, time or energy to meet those hassles. But I feel, yeah, I take an example, like if you're going for an interview, you have to be there at 10 o'clock. You missed your 9 o'clock bus. You are in complete stress. You have to reach in time. But now you have option. You missed the bus, but you can take an auto, you can take a cab, or you can ask somebody to drop you in the bicycle or in a bike. You have several other options to do that, but again, you have that stress. You have an option, but still you have to reach in time. So that is what I can call it as a stress. When I talk about pressure, 
when i talk about pressure suppose you are watching a cricket match and it is a final match as how it happened today india versus australia and the batsman who has to score the final number of runs to win the match if he loses that we will be losing the match that is the last minute stress turns into a pressure he has no other option he has to score so that is what we call it as a pressure so this happens in our daily life and how do we perform under pressure this is what we need to learn so focus on now don't think about what is already done think about the present focus on the now to conquer stress and focus on the success to conquer the feelings of pressure so never think low about yourself your mind should not focus on i'm going to fail the mind should always focus on i am going to win i am going to win that is a positive energy which you are giving so that is key idea one second one is handle pressure situations with right strategies strategy is very essential you need to identify the right strategy when you are in a pressurized moment you should not close up your mind open your mind and think of different possibilities and last but not the least practice confidence optimism tenacity and enthusiasm coach i can call it as a c o t e remember this confidence optimism be positive and tenacity perseverance keep doing keep trying again and again and enthusiasm with lot of energy bring these four confidence optimism tenacity and enthusiasm you can work and achieve in any situation any situation and i'm going to talk about what really makes us angry what is anger actually that is one of the uh, feeling which we get in our mind and which makes us feel nervous and which will not allow us to perform well there was a, a monk there was a, a, a place uh, where uh, people there is a monastery imagine there is a monastery people are there to meditate and a monk uh, the master monk is there and there are so many monks who are meditating and he used to say to the monks like you practice me meditation and come and tell me every day how you are progressing one uh, young chap one young monk comes to the master and says uh, every time every day he comes and says like i am unable to get peace of mind i am unable to meditate everybody is disturbing me somebody or the other is talking and the birds are making noise the leaves are making noise every everything around me is making noise and i am unable to meditate that is what he told the master so he says because of that i am getting angry i am getting angry the entire day so how do i meditate so then the um, uh, the monk master was asking you should find a way not to get angry with people or animals you just find out how what disturbs you then what happened he, um, he the the younger monk you know like he went to the banks of the rivers he thought that nobody will come there and he can meditate there also he was not able to meditate because lot of birds were coming and making noise then also he came and told the master like no 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 i am not able to meditate then he came and uh, thought Uh, he took a boat a small boat and he went into the sea he went to the mid of the sea and started meditating and he saw that oh my god i am able to meditate well today no disturbance for me and then he came back and again he went so every day he used to go like that one day what happens when he was meditating he could hear one splash of uh, water one small uh, splash of water made him angry then he shouted who is that disturbing me nothing was seen there then after some time one boat was coming nearer to his boat then he was uh, shouting at, at the boat stop there don't come near me don't try to disturb me i am meditating but there was no response and the boat continued to come nearer him and hit his boat immediately he got angry immediately he got angry and he yelled again but nothing changed 
now he was very furious and then he found that the boat did not have any boatman the boat was coming on its own it was probably drifted along in the breeze and had bumped into the monk's boat the monk found his anger dissipating it was just an empty boat there was no one to get angry at at that moment he remembered his mentor's question do you know what is really making you angry and then wondered it's not other people it's not other situations or circumstances it is not the empty boat but my reaction to it that causes my anger all the people or situations that make me upset and angry are just like the empty boat they don't have the power to make me angry without my own reaction the monk then rowed the boat back to the shore he returned to the monastery and started meditating along with the other monks there were still noises and disturbances around but the monk treated them as an empty boat and continued to meditate peacefully when the elder monk saw the difference he simply said to the younger monk i see that you have found what is really making you angry and overcome that so situations ladies and gentlemen situations will arise and there is nothing that you can do to prevent them the only thing you can control is how you react to them and in the end your reactions will determine the quality and future of your life it's not easy it's not easy as i say but remember it is in your hands control your reactions so you control your anger do not let your anger control your reactions do not control your anger control your reactions so that is what is anger management and why is it important to control your thoughts gaining control over your mind is a power skill that elevates your self esteem taking control of your thoughts is a skill you must develop if you want to have a happy life and every day is filled with many opportunities to let negative thinking rule your life and destroy your happiness negative thoughts cannot be stopped my dear ladies and gentlemen you should stop ignoring start ignoring the negative thoughts and bring in lot of positive thoughts in you the benefits of mind control will be you will feel like a superhero and you will have less conflicts you will sleep better you will be the master of your mind and you will feel the inner peace and for which you need to have proper goal setting if you have vision and goal setting you will be able to have good mind management because you will have the focus on the goals and also uh, you need to have an attainable goals realistic goal setting is required step by step step by step we need to set our goals once there was a eagle was coming of age and was about to leave from his nest and when he saw a large pig running around in the forest below he says to his mummy like oh mummy the pig looks yummy the mother said no dear you are not ready to hunt something so big yet start with a mice the young eagle begin being a good son listen to his mother and learn how to hunt a mice first he became really good at it and he could he could catch the mice really fast then his mind began to wander towards his original goal of catching the pig again the mother said no not it perhaps you should learn how to catch rabbits then the boy said now it's time for lambs the young eagle soon became master of catching lambs and then one day he saw the pig running around him he looked at the pig then caught his mother's eye she nodded approvingly and the eagle took off from his bench and swooped down he had pork for dinner that day and while eating the pig he finally understood why his mother did not allow him to go for pig in the earlier days setting the right goals at the right time is more important than having big goals many advocate you you should have goals that scare you and you should but at the same time 
divide that big goal into smaller and more easily achievable ones. Because once you can't achieve a goal, what happens? Something happens in your mind. It gets demotivated. So you have to be very, very careful while fixing your goals. And the master key to peaceful progress in life is accept the unchangeable. If you feel that something cannot be changed, please accept it. And change the changeable. If you have the ability to change certain things, change it. And if you feel certain things are unacceptable against your ethics and morals, then reject the unacceptable. This is what we call it as an ACR principle. Accept the unchangeable, change the changeable, reject the unacceptable. Because when you start accepting, it becomes a positive emotion. When you start, non-acceptance becomes a negative emotion. And something uh, we are going to talk about now, that is uh, your attitude of gratitude. That is also very important for your mind management. So uh, have you ever tried the cons, eating the cons? You could see that fibers getting into the tooth, also the mango fibers. When you eat the mango fibers also, those get into the uh, tongue, I mean the teeth. What will happen when, when it happens like that? When something gets stuck into your teeth, the tongue just keep going to that teeth. Only one teeth would have had the fiber in between, but still the tongue will go there and try to remove that whatever is stuck there. Now, 31 other teeth in our mouth, when nothing is stuck, the tongue can go there and say, wow, look, there is nothing stuck there. But that is the nature of the tongue that keeps going where something is stuck. And surely we have to deal with it. At the same time, there is a lot of other good things we can focus on. My dear ladies and gentlemen, it is not just the nature of the tongue. It's the nature of the mind as well. When there is a problem and the issue stuck in a certain area of our life, the mind keeps going to that problem and just gets stuck into the negativity of trying to deal with it. Many good things are happening. There are many good happening in our life. Why are we not thinking about it? Our mind goes only to the problems. It is necessary for all of us that we focus on the good that is happening in our life. Deal with the problems. Let us not consume our minds with negativity. Consume your mind with positivity. And there are so many good things we have been blessed with. Let us be grateful. There are countless number of blessings from the Almighty. Lot of good things might have happened in your life. Lot of people would have appreciated you. Lot of things you have achieved in your life. But we forget about all those things and think only about one failure which we would have had and one person who would have spoken negative about. So think about good things and that is what is the gratitude should become your attitude. And another most important thing which we need to learn is compassion. A young disciple came to ask his master, Master, what is compassion? The master explained, an old man was begging in a corner of a busy street. Imagine, there is an old man standing and begging. One lady, she passed by him and she was so scared of him that he may come behind her and she gave him one gold coin. Later on, a merchant came. He was a very big, rich person in the city and he came with a small group of people who were coming along with him. And he was seeing that everybody, the press people and everybody, all the entire public is watching at him. And he gave five gold coins to the beggar. And then a boy came, a small little boy came. He was collecting some flowers for his mother. He gave the flowers to the beggar. Now the master asked the disciple. Which one of them do you think had the most compassion toward the beggar? The merchant. The boy said, it is the merchant. The master smilingly, he continued. The merchant acted out of pride. He wanted publicity. He wanted people to talk good about him. The lady was so, so scared, acted out of pity. But the real compassion was felt by the boy. Compassion is far greater and nobler thing than the pity. Pity has its roots in the fear and a sense of arrogance sometimes, even a smug feeling. I am glad it is not me. When your fear touches somebody's pain, it becomes pity. 
when your love touches someone's pain it becomes compassion feeling compassion is more essential than showing compassion to train in compassion we should know that all human beings everybody is same and everybody suffer in the same way to honor all those who suffer and to know how are neither separate or not superior to anyone if you feel that we will not be hurting anybody and we will also not get hurt by anybody and this is what is the final thoughts and before that how to become a mental mastery you need to enhance your perception and intelligence enhancing the perception and intelligence is very very essential and take charge of your life you are responsible for your life so you need to decide what is required and what is not required what i should allow in my mind what or what i should not allow into my mind and when i get hurt when somebody says something when i speak i should also be very careful that i don't hurt anybody because the same suffering they will also be getting and we should also remember and conscious of our mortality we are not immortal a day will come where everybody will leave the world and we have been given a precious life by the almighty where we are we are here to live happily with peace of mind so mind should have peace depends upon the thoughts we put inside it that is what is going to decide a person of what you are how happy you are how you are living your life how you are making others happy how you are reaching your goals how you are setting your goals how you get self motivated how you become self confident avoid depression at any cost no need to feel bad for anything that happens in your life it's we should decide what should be the state of our mind if i have to feel for something it is my decision if i don't want to feel for something that is also my decision so why don't i decide in a positive way why should i suffer why should i take negative things into my mind why should i get angry why should i take pressure on my head why should i get stressful everything the answer is me i need to decide what is good for me what is not good for me and we need to take a holiday from our seriousness first of all it's not only the physical holiday we go for different places but even while going we will be taking our office mobile we will be thinking about the projects which are to be completed we will be thinking about the the tentative deadlines given by our boss all those things will spoil our physical holiday so take a mental holiday also at times and have a balanced life a balanced life is something where you give time for everything out of this 24 hours 8 hours of sleep the remaining 16 hours how much time you spend for your family how much time you spend for your own self how much time you are making yourself happy how much time you are doing service what you like to do how much time you are spending for your hobbies how many how many times you meet your relatives or friends in a week it's not 24 hours of work that is not a work life balance so if you need a peace of mind you need to relax as i said if your mind is hot you need to cool them cool it down how do you cool it down transform yourself to a place where you can cool down your mind talk to people who will cool down your environment there are people who talk good about you go to them ignore people who talk bad about you they are not required in your life just ignore don't get yourself into a situation where you get negative things into your mind so it is all in my hands it is not in our, it is in our hands to decide what we need to put as an input to our mind how we need to think how we need to act it is my life it is our life it's very very precious that we need to be very careful in giving inputs to our senses that is the very important thing which i would like to share here and your mind is a project not that work deadline coming up or the life goals you have set the tangible the ones which you can see 
cannot become actualized unless you work on the intangible that is your mind the mind and the thoughts are something which we cannot see or touch we cannot feel but we cannot achieve something in the physical world unless or otherwise we have control over our intangible that is our mind if we keep our mind clean and like a polished mirror all the uh, inbuilt talents the uh, every ability that has been showered on you will come out and reflect on that mirror in your mind and you will feel really 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 confident and happy and you don't want anybody else to come and give you any sort of motivation or any sort of boost and mind equals matter and you must invest to manifest so this is what i would like to tell here regarding the mind or the mental management and the emotion management it is all in our control there is no excuse for this no body is responsible for our reactions we react instead of reacting let us start responding we know how negative it will be when we start reacting to small small things as i said the first 3 minutes any thought that comes into our mind give 3 minutes if it is a negative thought within 3 minutes try to erase that if it continues it will go into your subconscious mind if you keep repeating certain things it will go subconscious mind will store that forever and it will be very very difficult for us to erase that. and thank you so much for your patient listening and uh, thank you isram university for giving me this opportunity to interact with you as this is a very very important topic as far as i am concerned and only when you are happy when you have peace of mind you can do anything uh, in your life and uh, this is my youtube channel you have around 1200 videos talking I've I've spoken on so many topics, and also you can reach me for any clarity. Okay. Bhagya ma'am. Bhagya ma'am. Ah yes, ma'am. I am here. Take for the session. If yes, ma'am. Yeah, they want to ask any doubts. Let them ask. Participants, I have a meeting. Ask her, ma'am. Any That's any doubts from the participants? any doubts from the part how oh, shall ma'am ma'am yes ah uh, yes ma'am ma'am i myself have a doubt ma'am what motivated you to take up this uh, 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 speeches, ma'am, to talk about all this, ma'am. What motivated you, ma'am? May you know the reasons. No, no. I as I was a uh, in education field, I was a professor, principal, dean, director in engineering colleges. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Lot of students. Okay, fine. So I I generally go with uh, students who need my help rather than uh, concentrating only on the students who can be on their own. so okay, i started my counseling as i said from for, for past 20 years i do counseling so okay, when i talk to people you know like more than i talking to them i listen to them okay. when you listen to them when they tell about what disturbs them what demotivates them and uh, what is the source of all this uh, depression because i have uh, come across situations where i have saved my students from suicidal uh, attempts yes ma'am so why one go go to that extent when we start uh, researching all those things you know it is the mind mind chatter or the mind noise which which makes them pushes them into that drastic decision so i started talking to so many people as i said like more than a lack of people i have counseled so when okay. you talk to people you will know like what disturbs them why they are demotivated why they are not happy so this is the reason this is the reason because uh, whatever technical world you are you are you may be in very good position whatever it is you may be the richest person in the world ultimately for me life is to live 
living is not uh, eating sleeping and uh, going in big cars you should have content in life you should be happy you should do what you like and you should feel satisfied first of all yes sir. you should not be deprived of anything in your life as i said 20 years from now many of them may feel that i missed that in my life i should have done that that time so your age will not come back again you cannot do reverse engineering here so you have to live your life then and there if you are in 20 years of age whatever is that you need to live you need to do it you cannot extend it i need to earn now after 50 years let me see if required i will enjoy my life but that is not the concept enjoying is different living your life is different earning is different so living life is the ultimate ma'am for any human being Thank whatever you. job you do you should live your life you should have content in your life you should have peace of mind you should sleep properly every day every night okay ma'am okay ma'am thank you so much ma'am it was indeed a breathtaking lecture and we sincerely thank uh, atal academy and our hod ma'am for giving us an opportunity to listen to you ma'am it was a very motivating lecture and we could see in the chat box also people are uh, uh, giving the same comment uh, and it gave us a new dimension uh, and a new level of thinking some key ideas like cope uh, acr concept and lot of ways to improve our uh, self awareness also ma'am thank you so much ma'am and i personally thank and on behalf of the department and the hod ma'am we thank you for joining us for this uh, ftp program ma'am thank you very much ma'am thank you all thank you all participants for your patient listening thank you